everybody, I'm Matt Doommaster with Alpha Game Reviews, and I wanted to talk to you today about an issue I've been thinking related to Steam Early Access releases, and that is the problem of gamer interest over time in any early access release. I got to thinking about this because of a game called Towns, which was part of, I believe, the first round of early access games. If it wasn't the first round, it was released soon after the program debuted. And this game recently came out of early access, even though the players who had purchased it didn't necessarily agree that it was really in the finished state. It's now released as a full game on Steam. And that alone was a little bit of a debacle. There was you know, some press about whether or not that Mint Towns had failed to do what he had intended to do, and if the developer was or was not abandoning the project altogether. But what I found particularly interesting about Town's situation is why the game ended up being abandoned. It wasn't necessarily just because of the fault of the developer, but because of monetary reasons. Now, after the original developer sort of took off from the project, said it was fully released, they did get someone to come in and do minor updates. Their job was to continue, continue development of the game based on community recommendations and also fix any bugs that are left in the game. That sounds fine, but after a few months, that developer also quit, which is what led to the accusations of the project being completely abandoned. And the developer, it turned out, quit because he had reached an arrangement which said he got, you know, a certain percentage, just a little bit, of all the sales of towns. And that would be his income. He wasn't getting paid, you know, they, they weren't saying you get paid this much. He was getting just royalties. And it turned out those royalties were not anywhere near enough to actually live on. So, you know, that's a small problem for the developer that got hired on. Uh, but it also reveals a bigger problem with games on early access generally. What has happened to towns, basically, is that gamer interest in the title has not lasted as long as the development cycle of the title. So you've got developers who could work on towns, but the game's not making any money. And so there's not really any reason to continue the development of the game. Now when you think about it, this makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Do we play games forever? No, we usually don't. Even people who play MMOs usually burn out after a year or two. And usually most people play a game when it first comes out, right? I mean, it's pretty rare for a game to actually be more popular after a few years than it was when it first came out. It does happen, but it's, it's rare, and it usually only occurs on solid indie titles that just didn't get very much press when they were first released. So if that's the case, and we have early access games that are sort of making their first marketing major marketing push at the time they're in beta or at the time they're in alpha at the time they have the first playable build that could possibly be sold what does that mean well it would seem to imply that these early access games are going to see a surge of interest at the beginning and then that's going to taper off so these developers are probably not going to be getting any more money for the project than they get within the first few months. Now developers are like anyone else, they have to eat and they have to pay rent. So if the game that they're developing on early access cannot sustain them, they will probably have to significantly da uh, decrease their updates or they might have to give up on the project more or less entirely, or at least make it a secondary priority. So I wanted to see if other titles that are on Steam early access were being affected by this. To do that, I looked at the 20 titles still on early access with the earliest release dates. Of course, the release, release dates, in quotes, are really when they were first posted on early access. None of these games are in their full release state as of yet. And I decided to take a look at how many players are still enjoying those games compared to how many were enjoying them earlier in their life cycles. Now, what I found is that the average player base retention is about 40% compared to the peak. But there are three outliers there. 
which have a hundred percent or better player base retention so in other words they're currently more popular than they ever have been before so if you take those three outliers out of the equation that drops to about 28 percent now 28 percent is not a terrible player base retention number in general but it nevertheless means that as you would expect less people are interested in the game right now than were interested in the game when it was first released the steam early access and in some cases we're talking about average currently playing numbers that are in the single digits or in the double digits and you know that's that's really not very many people at all certainly that's not the kind of thing that you would want to drive sales of your title to keep you fed and clothed and you know to pay your rent if you were a developer so you can kind of see where the issue is these games are sort of front-loading the amount of money that they're going to receive during their course of their lifespan and then after that it's just this long tail of decreasing profits generally speaking there are of course spikes if the game goes on sale on say for example the steam summer sale that's currently happening but other than that you know there's not a huge influx of cash and I can imagine that can be very discouraging it might explain why about half of the titles I looked at it was 9 out of 20 to be precise had no updates within the last month and I'm talking about actual content updates in fact quite a few of the games out of those nine uh, had not had a content update within uh, let's see two or three months I saw a lot of marches a lot of maze come up but we're talking about games that are being developed very slowly one of those by the way and I always note this when I can is Kerbal Space Program which is well loved but I really feel like the developers have been dragging their feet on that one and maybe the ever decreasing you know profits per month is part of the reason why now for the developers this should be very concerning I think it brings some question on to whether or not Steam Early Access can be considered a sustainable way of putting out your game at all it seems like unless you're one of the lucky few you're probably going to end up putting out a game that never really gets to the finished state you would have liked it to been in and you're also probably going to end up in a situation where you don't have the development budget you'd hoped for to complete the project whereas if maybe you tried something like Kickstarter you at least would know by the end of that Kickstarter whether you do or do not receive the development budget that you had hoped for this channel is not about developers or helping developers though it's about helping gamers decide whether or not they want to invest in certain early access games so the question is what can you do to avoid getting these early access games that never really come to fruition I think there are a few things you can do one is that you can look and see whether or not the developer has any actual track record you know uh, a lot of developers on early access don't have much of a track record they don't have anything to point to as far as games they've put out before uh, any experience etc sometimes it is that some person decided they would like to make a game and they thought it would be cool and they heard they get some money through early access so you know look into that see who the developer is do they have any experience with you know prior games because if they have experience it's likely they'll be able to put out out the updates more quickly and I think that is a killer thing when it comes to early access games if the updates are coming out quickly and they're substantial you can get more press you know out into the various gaming sites people keep coming back people keep getting interested so the game development can continue because the developer is still getting paid of course if things are too slow people say they forget about it you know and then the developer gets no money and the project starts to stall out another thing I would say is is avoid games that are in early early alpha states an example that I recently took a look at is the forest I know some people are excited about that game it does have a cool concept but let's face it right now there's not a lot of there there I mean unless you're like incredibly into ho survival horror games there's not a lot to do there's just some guys that kind of follow you around there's a few templates to build whatever you know and it's anyone's guess whether or not that game is going to create features that keep people coming back maybe it will be awesome but maybe it won't be there's really no way to tell at this point and by putting that game out in such an early alpha state I think the developers really 
uh, sort of have hamstrung themselves as far as future press goes. I mean, they're going to be, you know, putting out patches where it's like, oh, you know, trees don't fly up in the air anymore. Yay! That's not the kind of thing that is going to get the websites, you know, reporting on them. So, you know, that's that's the, the two pieces of advice I would have for you if you're looking at the early access games. Make sure that the developer has a track record. Make sure that the game is not literally, you know, the first playable, will not crash, maybe, build that the developer has put out. That's all I've got for you today. As usual, if you like what you heard, remember to hit that subscribe button. This is Matt Doommaster with Alpha Game Reviews, signing off.